Hello and welcome to Reawakening the Sacred Self, deepening our connection with our authentic soul, where we have gathered together in Indigenous elders, wisdom keepers, spiritual teachers, healers and inspirational speakers to share their wisdom and insights as to how we can integrate our spiritual practices more deeply into our everyday lives and thus deepening our connection with our authentic self. My name is Frances Billinghast. I'm your host for and the creatrix of this event and I'm coming to you from Ghana country here in Adelaide, South Australia. As such, I acknowledge the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains as being the traditional custodians of this land. So, mani na padni everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am delighted to welcome Ema Stassen. Welcome Ema. Thank you very much for being part of this event. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honour. The honour is all mine. So for people who do not know Emma and her work, she is a sacred storyteller and an earth witch. She helps witches, wise ones and healers to rise up and return to their power by walking the witch's wheel home. Emma works to bring the forgotten magic of the witches firmly into the collective consciousness again. She offers training in the old Irish indigenous ways through sacred stories of the goddesses and witches of ancient mythology and lore. Emma was originally from Dublin, Ireland. She lives now in central Scotland with her husband, three children and a border collie dog, Mank Riley. And the title of Emma's talk is Bridget's Flame as the Portal Home to Source. Sounds very intriguing. And Bridget is one of these goddesses whose sacred day is around the second or first or second of February. So it's really perfect timing for this event. So Emma, I would like to begin our discussion before we get into Bridget with you maybe telling us a little bit about your journey and in particular how did you become a earth witch what does that mean because the word witch itself can conjure up a whole range of feelings and emotions and angst amongst people so how did you well, what made you adopt that term and step into that power mm, yes yes well hello everyone and gosh so my my journey i mean a uh, uh, a very quick snapshot of of my journey you heard from my bio some aspects of of who i am in this moment because i'm very aware we we change we evolve we morph and my uh, my background is commerce and economics is which is what i studied at university and that led me into the corporate world for about 20 years and that was at the same time as when I birthed my three children over those years. And in 2017, there was something, and I'm sure many, many will resonate with this. There was something within me that started to speak louder than the job and the work that I was currently doing in that environment. I'd moved into the training area, taken a career change into training and development and I feel that really did seed my journey into entrepreneurship. And I remember one moment where I'd delivered a, a training course, leadership, you know, corporate leadership, how to rise up the hierarchy as quickly as possible. <laughs> I don't think I called it that, but that's kind of the essence of, you know, the training and the wonderful people, I must say, that I did, that I worked with. And there was that moment when I stepped out of the training room on the fifth floor of the office building and just I just felt I was on my way to the coffee machine. I felt so parched and so tired, but it was more than I'm tired. I need a good night's sleep. It was like a soul tiredness, a soul bereftness, because although this is all part of my path and everything we do is all part of our path, my soul really needed me to shift you know, from this path over this way, take a U-turn, you're going this way. 
And I knew it was like I was a dolphin out of water and I knew I needed to find my pod elsewhere, my tribe, my tuha, as we say in Irish. So that was a huge step to step out of this environment that was familiar with of perceived safety. And those years then up to 2020 was in hindsight now was the preparation for how which would find me. So it was never, ever a title I would have thought of adopting, although the journey was beginning to turn me back towards my roots, my heritage, the land of Ireland. So I live in Scotland. I live I've lived here for 20 years since actually returning from Australia and our travels around the world. So I came back from Australia in 2000. I knew I didn't want to go back home to that old life. So we landed here in Scotland, but it's still a very Celtic sacred land. But I was being brought back to Ireland and to retrieve and remember the gifts of these lands listen to the land speak again and the goddesses and the deities and then you know a long story short really it was on the lion's gate 2020 the 8th of august when i went on tour of the edinburgh dungeons in scotland it's a family friendly tour and it's very experiential so it's one of those tours that for people that are empathic and sensitive and see spirits, it actually could be very traumatic to go into these places. And for me, I went in not aware of anything, but going on trial, I volunteered to go on trial for being a witch. And it was at that moment when the judge raised his hammer in the air. He was on his wooden pulpit wearing his fluffy woolen wig raising it up and sentencing me to death for witchcraft. And he was citing the Scottish Witchcraft Act of 1563. And it was illegal. It was your death sentence to be called a witch, to practice witchcraft, to be accused of being a witch. So that was it. It was like, oh, something's happening within me. And I don't know what but this really means something. And I was turning to my kids and my husband and going, this really happened. Like it really happened. And they're just like, come on, we need to go into the next room now, you know? <laughs> so I was having this experience that I still hadn't words for. And it was like the witches were reawakening this flame of remembrance within me to remember the witch, the wise one, and these gifts that were cut short, you know, all these lives that had been cut short for me, for people listening, because of what? For sharing my wisdom, for speaking my truth, uh, for helping to heal people, for brewing beer, one of my favorite past lives that I've gone to. So, so ultimately it was the witches calling me out all along and this journey continues to evolve. So to summarize this part, it's the, the witch found and called me out of hiding in this life. Now, it sounds like it's almost like um, even you, you were like a portal for all these witches from the past to sort of like come through and connect with you as well as possibly even a past life experience right there then in Edinburgh because if I can remember correctly I think in Scotland they burnt a lot of the women while in England there was more sort of like hanging and drowning so it's a very horrendous time and these days there is a sort of resurgence in sort of like people wanting to deal with intergenerational um, trauma and one of these traumas passed down is the witch wound which is yeah. really really fascinating so when it comes to um, the goddesses, which goddess or divine archetype of the feminine first appeared to you or did you connect with? Were you always open to the divine feminine? No, <laughs> no, 
<laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> I mean, I've worked in, you know, my training was in banking and finance and we know what these worlds are like. So no, it was hidden away. Even though as a child, music, I loved music. I played the Irish harp. I played the piano, the guitar. So music and words were always within me and languages, the Irish language, linguistics. So it was always here. But I wore the corporate mask and became predominantly masculine. I worked with my masculine energies. So the, and I love that you asked that because the journey of remembering which within me was ultimately of remembering the divine feminine aspects to come back into balance with my divine masculine so the first goddess so it was like it was the witches of the land of edinburgh because around that area they have counted 300 witches were burnt at the stake uh, on edinburgh castle mm -hmm. esplanade which is a great big open area with beautiful panoramic views around and there's most likely more because the records weren't all kept and written down. So it was the collective of witches that I feel were speaking through me as that portal. I love that you say that. And a few days later, it was actually the Kalyach witch who came in. And I always do this action because she swooped in. It's probably actually high speed, like whoop, she came in. And there was a thunder and lightning storm in Edinburgh where we were staying on staycation, I must add. We weren't meant to be there. We were meant to be on holidays camping in France that summer. But we all know we weren't allowed to go anywhere you know, that year. So we were on staycation and she swooped in after this almighty thunder and lightning storm. Like the collective of witches were like, we're so angry at what's happened. We're angry at being ignored. We're angry at being whitewashed and brushed, brushed aside. So she came in as the chief witch and spoke through poetry for me as the, in the I am. So I began remembering these I am type bardic druidic poems which I love, you know, and we use them for affirmations as well to really inhabit these, these energies, these archetypes. So she came in basically announcing herself. I am the Kalyach witch, creator of the Celtic lands. And I have journeyed long and vast and wide to be here today. And she's very associated with the rocks. And she birthed all of us from her primordial womb and she's back now to remember that she is the mother <laughs> she is the divine mother and for me she she gifts me the remembrance of the of the fierceness of voice and the truth of cutting through the crap and speaking the truth and that's like a like a swimming through like oh what is my truth I don't know what it is again. So she helps to clear the space, to really connect to that higher wisdom that's within us all. And to speak that, to share it now, which can be very scary and was really scary back then. It's a little less scary now, but there's still moments. <laughs> Yes, and, and, to answer and, your question. Yes, <laughs> it was and, her. And, and that's really interesting because I, I did study Celtic myth many, many moons ago. And in one of the stories, it's one of my favorite stories, um, because I come from an earth centric spirituality, spiritual path. And we always hear of the, like the turning of the seasons when we have the duel between two kings, we have the oak king and the holy king. However, there's another sort of dueling story which I, I love, and it comes from the outer Scottish islands, and it involves the Kaliak, and it also involves Bridget, which is in this story, Bridget is that you're probably very familiar with it. She's the maid of spring. And so we have this little dueling nature between the old hag, the old wise woman, the old crone, and the beautiful young maiden, which I think is a nice little segue and return back 
to Bridget, who we are going to be talking about today. So, firstly, had, I'm assuming you would have heard heard about this story, and any thoughts on that story? How do you feel about it? Well, I love I love that you brought in that that link you know it's like another portal and a bridge that you're connecting and weaving which is really beautiful and also that reminder a friend of mine explained it really well the other day to me that the Kalyach witch she guides us into the darkness at the darkest time of the year and invites us to go into the womb to face what we're a bit scared to face, to face the shadow, the distortions within us that need to heal. And then Bridget is the one with her flame who guides us to the light. And she's they're always here, aren't they? They're always here. The light's always here. The darkness is always here. And she is, she is that maiden of spring, which is really beautiful. And the bridge, to walk the bridge into the light. So we're maintaining that balance. And I love we're having this conversation now as we come into the time of Imbolc in the Northern Hemisphere and Lunasa in the Southern Hemisphere. And here we are upon the earth of each hemisphere which is really special, really special. So it's all about this balance and the Kalyach and Bridget, they work together as these very powerful energies that are within us all to maintain this balance Mm -hmm. and these bridges, because no one's been left behind here as we're ascending into new earth. The bridge is here if we choose to walk it together or alone Hmm. and as you said and Bridget is waiting there almost in some of the other uh, mythologies we've got Hecate or Hecate or whoever we had different pronunciations of her names and she's known as the light bearer with her torch as well but Bridget and her sacred flame this is something that often is sort of overlooked Um, I don't know if it's because there is maybe a little bit of confusion with some people in relation to is Bridget from, say, the Celtic mythology stories with the sacred flame, is she the same as Saint Bridget? Are they completely different aspects of the divine archetype? And so why don't we just sort of move in there then move from that into Bridget's flame as well? So we first asked you about, are they the same goddesses, different goddesses? Can I say the word goddess when it comes to a saint? I get confused. Yeah, yeah. Another beautiful question because I'm I'm all for simplicity. And yeah, someone else said humans were complicated enough. So let's keep things simple, you know. And the mythology, Irish mythology, it can be very confusing as lots of them can be so I when I feel into the energy of Bridget now I feel her as the same and she is the ancient she's an ancient goddess of the Celtic lands and that's like Ireland Scotland Wales the Isle of Man France you know so she's she's known throughout throughout the world and then when Christianity came to Ireland around about the 5th century, many of Bridget's goddess, ancient, wild, primordial (laughs) goddess, were um, woven, is the word, woven into Saint Bridget. So she is still very present. And I can share a bit about my visit to her lands in Ireland in a moment as well, if you want. But it's really, her energies are so strong that for the first time, uh 2023 there is now a national holiday in ireland for saint bridget because we're coming back into balance and we've always celebrated saint patrick is he a saint is he a villain (laughs) the jury's out and now snakes yeah do not get rid of the divine feminine (laughs) you know or was it the distorted snakes he's getting rid of? Who who knows? So now we we are honoring. It's more in the conscious awareness now that Saint Bridget is being honored 
and she has her day now. So I view them as similar energies. I tend to I tend to go back as far as I can, to be honest. You know, where where was the first seed of her energy? And that's what I invite people to do to connect with the purest of the pure form of of her energy now. Yeah. And I think there's also a connection with Mary of the Gales as well, but as you said, exactly. she, she's known by many names and even Briganta and even or Britain itself, and some interpretation stems from Bridget or a derivative of Bridget. So it's really fascinating. Yeah, and you mentioned the West, the Scottish Islands, and that's the Hebrides, Hebride, Bridey. So it's after Bridget too, which yes. is beautiful. So she's Again, it, it's almost like she predates what we know of her, both as a saint and also as a goddess. So yeah. very much of the land. But you did mention that you had an experience um, in 2013 with her flame. So please, if you feel willing to share it, it'd be really interesting to hear that from you. Yeah, it was actually 2023. So um you know, it was it's very recent. And I had I had visited her lands because part of the witch awakening, this initiation into witch was going to places where I feel called. So when I go home to Ireland, to Dublin, where I'm from, I generally I go to a sacred site. And last year in 2022, as we're recording this, I went to her place in Kildare. And Kildare is a county outside Dublin. And in Irish, it's Kildara, which means the church of the oak. Kill is church, Dara is oak. So the oak tree is very associated with Bridget. And you mentioned oak earlier and the Druids and the strength and power and protection. And the trees are very important in, in Ireland and the Ohm language first came from the trees they say so I went to her place at Kildare and now so she had a fire temple there in the center of Kildare where her flame was kept alight so that was my first introduction to Bridget and her flame and in the central square of Kildare it's just a small little town lovely place and they have a statue to her a bronze statue of the flame and the flame is always held and kept by the Brigadine Order, who are an order of Catholic nuns. And I went to visit their sanctuary and they've built this eco sanctuary outside Kildare that is in the shape of Bridget's cross. So it's a different shape. We have the cross like the, I was raised Christian Catholic. We have our Catholic cross and we have Bridget's cross, which for me, represents the seasons of the year, the spiral, the weave. So I went to visit her temple and the the ancient rock is still there and you can feel the energies of this space where we communed, we guarded and tended to that flame and it was held sacred by her 19 priestesses, as the story goes. But now there is a church, a great big um cathedral really um and in the place on the grounds of her temple so when I went I hadn't planned on going in or anything but the gates were locked and it was closed for the winter but I was looking through the gates and this lady you know it's so typical this lady was coming out and I was like oh can I you know could I go in and have a look inside the cathedral or the church and she's like oh yeah my husband's in there just now tidying up so just go on in and I'll I'll phone him and tell him you're coming <laughs> like fantastic so I open up the giant iron gates and I step inside I'm allowed in and this lovely wonderful man he spent so much time with me I was alone in this church there was part of me going I'm alone in this church <laughs> stranger and the other part was like go go with it I felt like Bridget was guiding me and he he let me ring the bell so everything that happened felt really symbolic basically he's like ring the bell and you know the bell is so significant or was for 
you know, hailing in Christianity and Catholicism, the bells are still rung. But it's for me, it's like the bell of the oracle to listen to the wisdom within. And then he said, well, go sit on the, on the throne. And the first Protestant minister in Ireland is, is female, that the first woman, the first female Protestant minister basically works in this church. And he said, that's her throne. So or that's her seat. Go and go and sit in it. Like, really? Really? Can I can I sit here? And so I sat on the red velvet throne and it just felt so amazing and symbolic because part of my that witch awakening journey back in August 2020 was to return to my power to like a whole mantra came through, which is rise up, return to your power, which is rise up. Now is the hour, which is rise up, step on to your throne, which is rise up. It's time to come home. So there I was climbing up the steps, sitting on the throne and really inhabiting this space of Bridget. It was really, really, really special. Um, and the final part of that, that story of, you know, he was such a divine feminine divine masculine energy that this man that was showing me around in this in Bridget's space and the final part of that was then I went went on and visited her well as well because the well you know she is the goddess of smithcraft as um, you mentioned earlier of the forging the flame in the fire but also the well waters and there's so many wells dedicated to Bridget so I also went and connected with that fluid, watery energy at her well as well. Um, and that experience, then it was really beautiful and really powerful. And then that I feel seeded the experience that I had this year at Imbolc at the time of February. <laughs> so I can share more of that. I'll just take a breath for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. And, and while you're taking your breath, I was just thinking, I just wanted to comment that I just found it was wonderful that you were guided through Bridget's chapel, her church, guided onto her throne by a male, a keeper, a sort of protector of her. And in a lot of the old ancient teachings, the divine feminine was had male keepers and that was the role of the divine masculine, not the sort of competition that we see these days, but the two to work together. And for the masculine to also work very perfectly in balance with the feminine. I just found that really beautiful. And mm -hmm. getting to well up and thinking, oh, that's just so nice. But um, please tell me about your experience, well, more recent experience with a flame. That sounds really, really intriguing. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for that reflection. That's really, oh, I can, I can feel that landing within me. And I feel like... I need to add as well that when we allow that, you know, because there was part of me that was going, am I safe here? You know, my mum and my son were actually in the cafe nearby, you know, because they didn't, they didn't, my son didn't want to come in. Um, and the other part is like, welcome this. This is really beautiful synchronicity. Um, and yeah, so I feel like that did plant the seed as it all does in hindsight. And then this February, February seems to be like for me personally and for many, it's such a powerful time. Um, it's the time my father passed away in February, like 29 years ago. But it's still it's a very powerful energy. It's Bridget's time as well. And I woke in it was coming towards the end of January of 2023. And I woke in the early hours and I was half awake, half asleep. And I sensed this presence in my third eye, you know, in the room. And I just knew, clear knowing it's Bridget, Bridget's here. And these words came through. And then once I got up and, you know, the kids went to school, I wrote them down, but they were percolating within me. So I can share some of the words that that came through. And it was oh, like she was she was waiting, you know, <laughs> kind of like, come on, you know, she'll she'll get here. <laughs> It's kind of like the way I tell a story. There's kind of like the pre-story, like the stages. She'll get there. The so, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
And yeah, I'll read it from the start. I'll read it from the start. I woke last week, last week, so this was in January, to the sight of Bridget standing before me. And I sat up with a start and asked her, why was she there? But she didn't reply. And she held her gaze steady upon me. And that gaze was as still as this flame that she was holding. And it was the eve of Bridget's day, her day, marking the turning of the seasons of the year from winter solstice into Imbolc, the changing of the goddesses from Kalyach to Bridget. You're early, I said, and still she didn't reply. That flame that she was cradling appeared to get bigger, expanding in the palm of her hands and mesmerising my awakening eyes. I don't know if I'm ready for the glow of your fire, I said. I like the darkness, you see. Can I stay here a bit longer in this warm winter womb, in this place of relative safety? And it was like my words sparked something within her because she sparked to life and her flame was now surrounding her in the image that I was seeing. And she was silhouetted in the brightest of divine light. And then she took a step towards me and began to recite these words that I later wrote down. I have held this flame for eons for you since time began. This flame is an ancient being of pure elemental fire. And I stand before you today to remind you of this flame. For it is indeed a flame of remembrance. And she continued, for this is my time the threshold time of Bridget. And we're stepping into Tara, new earth, and continuing to seed this earth. And then she handed the flame to me. And I nervously took it. And it became a tiny spark, which felt warm in the palm of my hand. And she said, Nurture this flame, connect with this flame and feed it with your desire. Feel this flame, dance this flame and honour your inner fire. And with that, she was gone. I'm looking around going, what just happened? And I can hear my son going, mom, where's my school shirt? <laughs> As I'm having this moment with Bridget. Oh. So, yeah, that is the strongest. And since then, I feel like she's helped even more awaken within me because it's a different energy to the Kalia. As powerful. And there's there's a patience. I feel like the Kalia gets very, you know, gets impatient with me anyway. And is like, come on, come on. Get off your throne. <laughs> you know, come home. And Bridget is, she has this very powerful gentleness to her that kind of pierces right through you. So, yeah, that was another turn of the spiral of the connection with Bridget. Yeah, which feels like it still, still continues today with her flame as the portal. And, and it's just so, so powerful. It's almost like her silence is a very commanding silence. She sort of brings you in and you're sort of going, well, what do you want from me? What do you have for me? And as you said, the message was that she's holding this flame for you, for aeons. <laughs> how, how, wow, so sort of like how humbling it is as well. Yeah. Yeah, and there was almost slight annoyance there too. Like, I've been holding this for ages, you know, for eons. Come on. And it's a message for everyone. You know, you, the you is you and you and you, everyone watching this. So just sort of expanding on that, 
for people who aren't familiar, say working with the Divine Feminine or with Bridget, and basically now being told that she's holding this flame for us, what are we supposed to do with this flame? You seem to have a little, a little bit more of a guidance or knowledge in that area. What's our next step forward to what is she wanting us to do? Did she tell you what we are to do with her flame? Well, it has unfolded that more, ha more has come through where the flame, a, later, a few months later, there was a, a vision I had in a meditation and it's where her flame, I see it as this golden fiery red flame and where it parted a little bit and became the portal through. So for me, I feel the flame is this, there's many aspects to it. Firstly, as now I call myself an earth witch, part of this reclamation of the gifts of which has been befriending the elementals once again particularly fire. So I'm Sagittarius. I have apparently, uh, I don't know what's what a word, lots of planets in Sagittarius, so very fiery. And, um, but I'm Libra rising, so I'm not like, you know, <laughs> like volcanic all the time. And part of that is befriending the flames of the fire that took our lives. And I say our, because I'm sure there's people listening that will know this somewhere these elements were turned and distorted and reversed and used against us. So we're befriending and healing the witch wounds is healing our relationship with these elementals. So that was one aspect of not fearing our fire within, not fearing this divine spark that wants to resurrect within each one of us, this Kundalini, this life force energy. And I'm looking down because this is still a journey for me connecting to this molten lava fire force within that scares me at like this power is like a power who that many of us haven't felt in a long long time so that's one aspect of the fire and the other aspect is purging what no longer serves what we no longer need and I feel the kalyak comes in to support this as well to clear the circle because when we in order to go through the flame the fire will cleanse and purge the lies that we've been holding on to the conditioning the distortions the mistruths and the twisting of the story because irish lore was an oral lore indigenous lore was oral it was told through stories. It was through, through, you know, through the song lines, through the dream time. So when it was written down, is it all the truth that was written or were there distortions in the lore of what was written down? So letting go, and that's exactly where I am right now because I've walked the wheel, the eight seasons of the year, the witch's wheel and taught these myths and now, for me personally, I'm being asked to let go of these. And not all of me wants to let go because I love Irish mythology. I love the stories. And she's saying, go through this flame. That is a portal. It's almost like a yoni as well. It's like, go through the portal, purge what no longer serves and connect with the story of your soul. All these past lives that you remember now that are coming back to be healed. And the story of your soul and your mission of why you're here right now. So it's a purging, a clearing, so that we can fully connect to the pure source of who we are and carry out our mission here on Earth. Simple as that. Providing <laughs> that we know what it is, what our mission exactly. is. Exactly. Exactly. But, but, but maybe that's part of the, the realization you said is just to surrender to purge to what, what the image that I got you know we were talking about both the Kalek and the Bridget there was that almost like Kalek is holding the space for Bridget's flame to purge to burn away it's, it's a very alchemical process and I'm beginning to wonder no I'm sort of looking back at the title of your talk as the portal home to source what is source that comes back to our original 
connection, who we are meant to be, as you said, our original story, that maybe we've covered up with all the layers of, can I say, falsity or other, other people's stories. As I said, it's very, a lot of shedding needing to come back to find out who we are. Yes, yes. And for me personally, that's why I had to leave the perceived safety of the corporate environment and why I had to leave home to travel the world and then create a new home here in Scotland. And yeah, mind control was what was coming as you were speaking, was that how we are um, mind controlled. There's there's a lady called Cathy O'Brien. I don't know if you've heard of her who's written transformation of america and she says mind control is a sliding scale and i used the word mythological propaganda a while ago in an email i sent and it felt risky and at the same time you know, what's the story that's been perpetuated what's the narrative that those in power perhaps wish to perpetuate and rehash so this is an alchemical journey and this is the greatest reclamation of our time to turn towards the flame and even turn towards the witch within you and notice where you feel triggered by that word or what it does for you and go through the flames again to your source truth because I another word for which that I use is sorcerer and I know there have been sorcerers and are still who do harm in the name of witch in the name of the craft of the witch and I spell it with a u s-o-u-r sorcerer e-r-e-r -E -R, you know <laughs> with a u because it's that connection to universal source and that's an ongoing journey of the yeah. pure truth of who we are. And yes, as you say, with the Kalyach holding that space and Bridget and those who who resonate for you, it may be higher self, you know, may not have a name or an archetype. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just sort of like weaving that into the theme of the conference is your soul is another term for source because we have all these labels, but what you know it's like the tomato or tomato it's, at the end of the day when we pull back the labels it's the same thing that we're really really talking about yeah so, yeah always. which is why i felt so it's felt so powerful that you asked for me to be here in your event mm -hmm. because that's the ultimate it's our birth birth right and has been for eons to reclaim this pure nature of our soul to the times when we lived, you know, pre-Atlantis, you know, Lemuria, Lyra and Tara, which is what I, I call New Earth and that ancient planet. So it's remembering these times when all was pure and we're bringing, calling these gifts in now to support our soul path. And we'll find out what that is step by step as we let go of the riverbanks, you know, let go of the old story, oh, and allow ourselves to grieve <laughs> that letting go. And then, yeah, synchronicities will happen. You'll listen to talks in this global gathering and sparks will go off. You'll see a book that you need to read. You know, all of this will happen. Yes, and even when you were just talking about that, because um, I recently, well, recently, last year, I went to, to Egypt for the first time in 30 years, it's maybe 30 years wow. to get there. And it's the same thing. It's just like this resurgence or interest in the old, the old ways or the old landscape. But it's almost like coming back to and revisiting what we've lost, what we've disconnected from, whether it's the earth, whether it's our story, whether it's the true essence of our soul, our source, and burning away all the the dross what's no longer of use. But in order for us to move forward, it's almost like we need that foundation again. And that's our 
to have our foothold, which is from the ancient lands, to guide us forward. It's almost a paradox in itself. We're going yeah. backwards to go forward. Yeah, that's so powerful. So powerful. And there's maybe I'll share that as part of my free gift as well. There's a, another poem that came through a few weeks later that connected Bridget's flame with the Magdalene flame. But they were all gathered because you already spoke about Bridget being the Mary of the Gwales, which she is, which is beautiful. But they were all in the temple of Dendera. Hathor was there and Mother Mary. So it, again, it felt like a similar vision, but they were all around the flame. They were all there. And it was that connection with, with Egypt, with the ancient lore, with the pure of purest of pure source aspects of Egypt as well. And, and I mentioned at the beginning there that I did do some years studying Celtic mythology. And one of the stories that one of my tutors said, whether it's poetic license or not, but there was a story that of the traveling people that came from Egypt then Iberia to land in Ireland. And that's why there's a deep connection or these being the trading routes and then on to Scotland and the Gales. That's why there's, there's all this connection between these, these countries, these lands and the stories as well. Yes, absolutely. And I've gone there through portals, like through the sacred sites and connected with, with Egypt. So it's like we're all doing it in our different, you know, it's like this spiral around the globe of where we are. And what we're connecting to and awakening. And absolutely, I fully agree with that, that migration from east to west. You know, because there's so many similarities in the, the rock art and the stories and yeah, you know, and Hathor. It's just, and it's not just there, it's all around the world, really, which sort of like, yeah, you know, when you start thinking about it, you can you were know, talking about portals. We can fold our many portals when we start getting into the similarities and the, even that the rock art, like here in Australia, of you know, what we would call them space men, and we see that in um, Mexico and we can see it all around the world. And it's just like, okay, it's time to sort of take back and have another cup of tea, I think, so, so we can sort of process all of that. Exactly, exactly. There's a lot, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, so much. Yes. Well, Emma, unfortunately, we are running out of time. Now, you did mention um, a free gift. We, you were going to do the Sacred Story of the Kaliak Witch, which will be wonderful. Um, and also the story about, you said, the Mag Magdalene Flame as well. So if people are wanting to find out more about you, do you have any courses coming up? Do you have any journeys back to um, say Ireland or around Scotland sort of walking your wheel again where can people reach out and find more about your work oh yes yes so when this airs I'm doing individual um, seasons of the witch's wheel like as one-off events online so that at the time of recording there will be one for in bulk and connecting with the energies of Lunasa as well. I think that is the 2nd of February. So if, yeah, it'll be on my website, emerstassen.com, and you can catch it live or in the replay. And also I am planning a retreat in Ireland. So I ran one in Scotland this year and it was so, so powerful. So I'm looking at venues. So when you access my free gift, you'll be on my mailing list and keep in touch, keep in touch, because I very much flow with what's alive and what wants to be aired as a, as a program, as a, as a course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so and, touch. No, but that's wonderful. And of course, um, Emma's web address will be listed below this recording. So Emma, thank you very much for sharing not only your wonderful wisdom, but the beautiful stories as well and the connection with Bridget. It's very inspiring and giving us all something to think about why she's holding this flame for us for so long and what are we going to do and step up for it. So thank you very much for being part of this event.
Thank you so much. And there was just one more like phrase I meant to say is that she's holding the torch for us, that I am the torch and you are the torch. So we are all the torch in every step we take, guiding people to the light. So yeah, mm -hmm. thank you so, so much, Frances. This has been amazing. Uh, definitely, it's amazing. Great honour too, as well. So to the wonderful audience, Natalia, I thank you and I hope you have enjoyed this as much as I have. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Good blessings.